Silly YouTube, welcome back to the Not Even French YouTube channel. As you can see, I'm still in New Zealand. It's winter here. I've got my cozy jumper on, but not for long. Next week, we are heading to France, and I am going to be in the 30 degrees Celsius, loving life, escaping winter, lapping up the summer over there. We are going for almost three full months. I could not be more excited. So please, if you have any videos that you would love to see, please leave your ideas in the comments down below because I'll definitely be checking them out as the final video being posted before we go back to France, which is just so freaking exciting. So today's video is talking about some of the more bizarre, strange, interesting, let's say, traditions and concepts that can be found in the French culture. Things that I haven't actually heard of in any other culture and make them very uniquely French. Now some of these traditions are so old that I couldn't find a reputable source to let me know exactly where they came from so sometimes that just sort of is what it is but I'm sure you're going to enjoy some of these more quirky concepts and let me know as we go along what your culture does for these specific traditions if you have something equivalent or if you're French and you know a little bit more around where it came from I'll definitely love to know that as well. Now just before we get into the juicy content I did want to thank our wonderful partners over at NordVPN today for partnering with me on this video because they have been such a huge source of me being able to stay connected to France these last few years. Essentially they're a VPN service which you can use on your computer and it makes your computer believe that it could be anywhere in the world. So I often of course say that I am based in France and I can access French TV and media and news sites and all of those things as if I were just a local based in France and it's been so good for staying connected to the culture, being able to watch day-to-day -day news shows, being able to watch quirky French TV series that haven't quite made their way to Netflix, being able to watch French reality shows, all of that kind of stuff because you do pick up on some of these funny quirks and traits and cultures and traditions and it does help you stay connected to the behavior of the culture let alone the language been so good for my French language so if you have a country in mind that you would love to stay connected to or you just I don't know love British TV series or Swedish films or whatever that looks like a VPN could be a really really good option for you essentially there's no lag it's super quick NordVPN is actually voted the world's fastest VPN as well and because they have over 5200 servers in over 60 countries it means it's super quick and of course you have access to essentially any country that you can possibly think of. It honestly couldn't be easier. I have an extension on my browser, one click, and I am in France, and it's compatible over loads of devices, so I share my login with Niels. We have one as a family, and he has his Android devices. I have my Apple devices. It really works across all different platforms. So if you're curious about getting a VPN, definitely click the link down below, or you can just head straight to nordvpn.com slash notevenfrench, and you'll see that NordVPN give my audience a massive, massive discount on the two-year plan. It's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for doing that. It ends up being like the price of a cup of coffee or something and you actually get to travel around the world with your media with your news with your entertainment it's super super cool so definitely check that out if you are keen all right without further ado let's jump into some of these funny cultural traditions and concepts only to be found in France. All right, so I discovered this first concept when I was looking for French themed merch like t-shirts and things like this and I came across this scary looking like clown or puppet character coming out of a drawer that placed on a stomach like where a baby would be. So it's, it's meant to be t-shirts for pregnant women. And it comes from the saying, avoir un polichinelle dans le tiroir. Now apparently the French word polichinelle comes from a character in Italian theatre. Now I do not speak Italian so I'm probably going to muck up the pronunciation. But the character's name is Puccinella, which is then linked to the Italian word for chick, which is Puccino. And there's a similarity here or a crossover here, which also led to the French term around having a chick in your tummy or avoir un poussin. Dans le ventre. So this saying to have a chicken in your stomach was used to describe pregnant expecting mothers around the Renaissance period in France. That's when it dates back to. Long story short and with a lot of crossover we now have un polichinelle dans le tiroir which means this puppet in a drawer. So if you ever see t-shirts like that, I mean they're probably worn at baby showers and things like that. I find it rather creepy, but long story short, that's the French concept and that's kind of where it comes from. I don't know, I just can't help but think about this baby coming out like with a jester's hat looking like a puppet or something freaky like that. Alrighty, the next French custom I want to talk about is Poisson d'Avril. So April Fools in French, but Poisson d'Avril obviously means the fish of April. So what they do in France, especially um, school children, they all make these fish, these cut out, you know, fish off paper, and they will spend poisson d'avril sticking them to the backs of their classmates. And that would be like the big joke, right? Like if I stuck a poisson d'avril on your back 
and you didn't know about it, he he he, you know, I got you, you know, April Fool's kind of thing. Of course, the French still indulge in a bit of, you know, like, fake news stories, or those kind of funny jokes, pranks, um, cartoons, all that kind of stuff, but this fish concept I find quite particular. There are so many different theories out there on how this expression actually originated. One that I saw was that April is traditionally such a bad month for fishing that if you were eating one in April like it had to be a joke kind of thing. Whatever its origin, April Fool's Day in France is absolutely linked to fish. <laughs> Notably the one that children will stick on your back so that they can cry Poisson d'Avril at you. <laughs> The next French tradition that I would love to share is anchored in religion, but it's one of those French traditions that started out representing something religious, but even very agnostic families will still celebrate it because it's just so ingrained in the culture. And this is serving of the galette de roi. Now I was thinking about galette de roi the other day because my lovely friend Christelle made one for us. We had one around here at home for a goûter, for an afternoon snack. And it's a really cool concept actually. So galette de roi is called king's cake if you want to translate it literally. So traditionally it served between January 6th and 12th to represent the Epiphany, which is a religious feast day commemorating when the three kings arrived at the manger of baby Jesus. Today though, as I said, it's just a nice way to celebrate the new year and to eat a nice cake with family and friends. Now what makes this Galle de Roi special though is that it's not just a cake, it is actually anchored in a 700 plus year old tradition because within the cake you have a fiv, something that is hidden inside the cake. So the fiv are used to be like a fava bean, but the fifth now today it could be a little character, usually they're sort of, you know, um, porcelain, and they can be different shapes of, of you know, little, little people, um, I've even seen birds, but it's something that you essentially hide within the galette de roi, and if you have the slice that contains a little fiv, this very harder little character that you discover, you get to wear the gold crown, the paper gold crown that goes with it, and be the king or queen for the day. This one always makes me think of my husband's grandparents, because they would always make their own galette de roi, and Pepe, his grandfather, would always, always, always make sure I had the slice with the fib. So shout out to you, Pepe. Next up, we have one around Christmas time, and this is Père Fouetta. Now, I have spoken about Père Fouetta on this channel before when I did a video on Christmas traditions, um, but I think it's quite funny. The literal translation of this name is Whipping Father, or sometimes translated as Old Man Whipper. And essentially, he's a scary character who follows Santa Claus around, and he's there for the naughty children. So he's got this really, like, dark, sinister, a look with like black robes and a long scraggly beard and essentially he is there to disperse coal to the naughty children or even give whippings or beatings. <laughs> Some incarnations of the character even have him wearing this wicker backpack and he can use it to put the naughty children in there and carry them far, far away. Or sometimes he's just simply carrying a big large bundle of sticks on his back. Either way, he's a little bit creepy. And while we share this concept around obviously Santa Claus giving out the gifts to the well-behaved children, we didn't have this dark, sinister character who was definitely going to punish us. Like, Santa Claus might give us a lump of coal, but there's definitely no whipping involved. Now, I couldn't do a video on French traditions and customs without talking about Le Pejo. Look, it's not the fact that you have this pre-lunch or pre-dinner sort of drinks and snacks. I mean, I think that can be quite common in quite a lot of cultures, but there's just something different about Le Pejo. It's sacred, it's a ritual, and certain things can go down in Le Pejo that they can't in other times of the day. And the way the French do it, it's like, it's a feeling. It's a feeling of connection and hanging out with people and sharing a moment. It's that, it's that picnic by the riverside and having some pretzels and some cheese and baguette before dinner. So I would say in some ways it's almost a state of mind, it's a state of being. There's a sense of flow when you're having the Pejo. It's so hard to explain, but it's also sort of, you know, the only time of the day where you could possibly justify having a fizzy drink while you eat, you know, like, or in general actually, like in France, like, it's just not really done. So you might have like a fizzy drink while you're having your snacks, your peanuts, your pretzels, or your, a bit of cheese, or like whatever it is, some charcuterie, while you're enjoying your apéro, because you would never have that while you're actually eating a proper meal kind of thing. There's just, these unwritten rules, and it's just a beautiful moment of connection and enjoyment in the French culture. Next up, I want to talk about the sacred top of the baguette. Now this is so funny. You know, there are 
rules in France, social rules around, you know, eating on the street, snacking on the street. Of course, with the arrival of food trucks and things, things are slightly changing. Like you can get a crepe at a food truck and eat that on the go, kind of, still better to sit down. Um, but in general, in France, you're not snacking and eating on the go, right? And there's this quite cute exception to that, which is the tip of the baguette. So when you go to the boulangerie, the bakery, you get your fresh baguette for, for the day. It's like, You've got the baguette in a long uh, piece of paper essentially wrapping around the baguette and you can just see the tip. And what you're allowed to do, what you're permitted to do in the French culture and what a lot of people do is that they will just eat the tip of the baguette en route. It's like they're just a little bit that they've been allowed to eat. They're allowed to have a snack on their walk home. Not below the rim of the paper bag, never but just what's surfacing out the top. Next up, we have the screeching of car horns when someone gets married. Now, to be fair, in New Zealand, when you see, you know, a wedding procession going down the street, and there's obviously the car where the married couple are inside and maybe it has balloons and that kind of stuff, you know, sometimes you'll give a cheeky toot toot just to say congratulations to the couple, but not like this. I want to share with you a video of what it can sound like in France. <laughs> So as soon as newlyweds get out into their car and drive off, the whole procession starts going nuts, lots of tooting, lots of car horns, and it actually sort of triggers this flow on effect amongst all the people, obviously in smaller towns and villages and that kind of stuff, they definitely all join in in the chorus and it's very common for this very loud car orchestra to see you off in your first day as a married couple. Next up we have a particular tradition coming from one of the French carnivals. Now you know the different regions of France are all so diverse and unique and there are a lot of carnivals that go on throughout the year that really represent, you know, some civic pride and colour and music and shows and all of these kinds of things. And there's a carnival in Dunkirk which dates back to the early 17th century and it actually goes on for two and a half months between January and March and it represents the time that fishermen used to be out away at sea. Now one of the key moments that actually attracts thousands if not tens of thousands of people is a moment where you're in front of the town hall and the crowd's going crazy, it's chanting and that chanting is reaching its crescendo. At that point the people down below will have 450 kilos of wrapped smoked herring dumped onto their head. Literally a rainstorm of fish dumped onto their heads. People are out there with umbrellas, it's a whole thing, it's a whole vibe. If you've ever been to this event, let me know how it was down below because I'm struggling to see the interest as someone who does not like the smell of fish at all, but it also sounds hilarious and maybe something I should do once. The next tradition I want to mention is the beautiful Fête de la Musique. Now this is the festival of music. It takes place on the 21st of June for the summer solstice every year and it is when musicians, artists, creators come out into the streets of all French, you know, towns, cities, and they put on free shows, essentially. Um, the free performances, and people are out there enjoying music, dancing. It is the biggest sort of open air music festival as you walk around from amateurs to real professionals, people you, you would usually have to, you know, pay good money to go and see. Um, you know, often churches open up their doors and have musical performances as well, organists playing, all sorts of things, and you just have the streets ringing with art and music and it's a really really beautiful day and I just love that they have this every single year it's something to really really look forward to. The next thing I want to call out are very popular in the south of France and it's another Christmas tradition and it's the use of santons. So santons are these little characters they're often you know handmade and painted and and people get really serious about collecting them. Essentially they're, they're characters of the township or the village um, around the manger of Jesus. It's essentially a nativity scene but it's so of expanded to have all of these different characters and animals and people go quite hard and create townships and there's the inn and other buildings and the town well and there's all these things that you can collect and it's very um you know once you invest in a particular type of santon you continue on to get that size and that maker and it's a real activity for collectors. Last thing I wanted to call out are the famous fireman ball. So these are really cool. It's on Bastille Day on July 14th and apparently officially it started back in 1937 where 
where a group of people followed the firemen, the pompier, back to their place, back to the station after a big national parade or something like that and the party sort of went on and they got shown around where the firemen worked and, and that kind of stuff. Anyway, long story short, now every year on the July 14th, um, the, the firefighters will open up their doors and host these balls and these dances and these events inside their doors and they quite often have these sort of inner courtyards and, and really beautiful places that people can hang out and enjoy the space. Now it doesn't take long walking around Paris to see that there can be very long lines for these firemen's balls um, and it's just a good time, lots of dancing music well into the wee hours so it's definitely something that people are willing to wait for to get in because it's going to be quite a memorable night. Plus I think there's quite a few people interested in meeting some nice French firemen. Alright friends let me know which of these you found the most kooky or peculiar. I'd definitely love to hear from your cultural perspective what did you find quite strange or what do you find quite normal because you have something similar where you're coming from and otherwise thank you so much for watching till the end and I will catch you in just a few weeks with a very different background because I will be in France so I will see you then until then have a wonderful next few weeks I'll say a bientôt and we'll talk soon ciao